We're going to look now at Psalm 96 uh, rather quickly. It's already this anticipation, you see, of joy. And then we're going to look at the letter to Titus. Uh, and we'll say a few words about the pastoral letters. This is a new song. You see, sing to the Lord a shir hadash, a new song. You can only sing a new song in a new situation. It doesn't mean the latest thing coming out by the Beatles or something. It means a new song. The theme of this song is new. So we're again with peace in that notion. Huh? Uh, sing to the Lord a new song. In order to sing a new song, St. Augustine tells us, you have to be a new person. You have to be transformed by grace. And then you'll sing a new song. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Oh my goodness. If you've ever been in the, in the midst of a group of people who are really praising God, you know what this line is saying. Even now, in this anticipated foretaste, of heaven. Sing to the Lord. Announce his salvation day after day. Um, you see? Tell God's glory among the nations, among all the peoples, God's marvelous deep. My goodness, couldn't we do that? The marvelous deeds of our God? These are all over the place, aren't they? The marvelous deeds of God. To have our uh, minds and hearts sensitive to, to seeing God at work. Uh, it's beautiful. Tell God's glory among the nations, among all the peoples, God's marvelous deeds. How would you like, the other day a Muslim stopped me up in the, our big mall. I was dressed with my collar, so he thought I was a good target for evangelization. So, but his questions were great and challenging. What do you mean when you say God was born of a woman? That he ate and drank? That he died? He got the picture. He thought he could shake my faith by pointing out the preposterous nature of what I held. I said, Brother, I would like to talk to you. I don't have time right now, but you don't understand something. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. I hold that to be true. God was born of a woman, that he ate and drank, that he died, but there's one more step, brother. He rose. And God the Father took him back to himself not only as the eternal Son of God, but as the incarnate Son of God. And that's what I live by. And he delights my heart. Well, he walked away. Um, but you see, he had this notion that this is shocking. And he's right. So I must have to tell you, when I lived over there, I lived five years in Jerusalem, and many devout Muslims, not the kind who get on the, their own private plane, take off the kafia, and break out the scotch. They're not Muslims at all. They're warmongers hiding behind this pseudo-Islam. The real Islam people, huh, for the most part, are very gentle. And they would say to me, Abuna, I'm sick. Will you pray over me? And I would say, sure, but I'm going to pray to Jesus. Is that all right? Oh, that's all right. <clears throat> now, they're not great theologians. But they certainly have good hearts. And so, and a lot of times they got healed. Well, I'm going to Francis prayed over me. I'm healed, you know. It's a different world. With more contact, with more love, with more talk, we could have peace, you know. Let the heavens be glad and earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. 
Let the plains be joyful in all that is in them. Let all of the trees rejoice before the Lord who comes. The Lord comes to govern the earth, to govern the world with justice and the people with faith in it. Have you ever stopped to think I have? Suppose God were really actually king right now. And everybody brought their problems to him. What a world we'd have. What a world we'd have. If everybody really went to God as king. All right, now we're going to move into this text of Titus. For the grace of God, that's the kindness, the benevolence, which has an effect in us, um, has appeared. So Tidios, being saving, literally, uh, every man, all men, all human beings, saving all. Training us. This is a, a dear word in Greek, pedia. Means, um, bring a child up to be a real human being. Training us that we would rena- renounce uh, worldly desires and godless ways and uh, live sophronos. The interesting thing about these pastoral letters is that the, the, the um, vocabulary is very Hellenistic. It's like high class philosophical talk. You see, it's not the, the uh, direct wording of the gospel. Or even Paul in the other letters. Could he write like this? Of course he could. Did he? Well, a lot of people who used to think he didn't think he did. Uh, and that makes a big difference in how you understand them. We're not going to go into it right now because we don't need it. But you see, uh, live, to live temperately and righteously and devoutly in this age. Now, any good pagan would understand that goal. But if they saw a Christian there, you see, there would be a preaching of the gospel. It would be, you know, how many million people really admire John Paul II? Because he lived, uh, you see, uh, temperately, justly, and devoutly in the same. A very good man. In fact, they honored him because he was such an authentic human being. If we, by the grace of Christ, were authentic human beings, how many people would love Jesus Christ and come to know who he really is? You see, and it goes on, as we wait, waiting for the blessed hope and the epiphania, the uh, appearance. We're going to need that word uh, in the when we look at the gospel and the literature surrounding it. Await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. Now, um, that's one way to translate it. Or you could translate it, the great God and Savior, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, the appearance. He's going to come again. He's going to appear. He's going to make himself known. We're going to see him. And who is this Savior? The one who gave himself for us. To deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. Think, my friends, there are something like 5,000 different Christian sects. How are we going to fulfill this? You see, who gave himself, you see, to free us from all lawlessness and cleanse for for himself a people as his own eager to do good works. Gosh, we're fighting with each other. You know, now I must say, there are signs 
of under the pressure of the rejection of Christianity, Christians have got to realize they have to be together and they have to recommend themselves by their life, which will be a life, as it says here, you see, uh, which is temperate, just, and devout. A very just man. One who is just to all his employees. Well, who is he? Well, he's a Christian. You see how the gospel is preached. You see, eager to do what is good. And so this, the church picks this text. Of all the texts it could have picked, you see, for midnight mass, when everybody comes, the church is full to hear our call, you see, to be living justly and temperately and lovingly. I can remember uh, I was driving along and the pickup truck in front of me stopped real fast and I bumped into him. So he got out and I got out. And I looked and I said, well, thank God nothing happened. The man said, well, at least you're thanking the right person. And so I said, sure, that's the right person. And so it's a tiny thing, but how many of us have had experiences, especially when we wear a collar and we're on the plane? Oh, you get it all the time, don't you? I went to my first confession and the priest got mad at me and I've never been back since. I go to Mass every Sunday, but I can't go to communion because I can't go to confession. Or I was married outside the church, but somebody told me I could get it fixed up. What do you think? Can I try? You know, just the collar does this. You know? Uh, there was a time right after Vatican II when we all went without them. In fact, uh, I was down teaching at Catholic University and I wore a um, cravat, a tie. So I would look a little more liberal. And one uh, day I had to wear a collar because I had to go to a meeting. And I'm walking down the campus and all the students would say, Hello, Father. Good afternoon, Father. That never happened when I had a car tie on. I said, I'm nuts. I ought to wear a collar all the time. And they will relate to me as a priest and I can live, I can at least look like I'm living temperately and devoutly and really mean it. That's what we're called to do, the whole body. You know how many times you hear, I hear family, because you know, Father, my neighbor came to me last night his, and his wife and he said, how do you do it? I never hear your kids shouting. I never hear you two arguing. How do you do it? And they say, because of the help of our Lord Jesus Christ. Really? Tell me about that. That's how we evangelize. All right, we'll move on. 